Welcome back to Tyler's Tailgate Talk. Um, I'm Tyler, joined again by producer Max up there in the top right corner. Say hello to the people. What's going on, people? Um, big show, as always. Uh, week one, just getting underway today um, as we're recording this on Thursday. Um, still still got action when this is coming out on Friday. So um, definitely excited for that. Um we got a lot of stories to get to because this was a wild week for the uh, high school world and the college football world of uh, football. So you can't really talk about uh, college football without just getting straight into this uh, Bishop Sycamore story. Now, for those that didn't hear about it, um, basically... ESPN holds these high school football games as like a Friday night showcase. Um, and uh, IMG Academy is like one of the biggest, uh, basically the Alabama of high school football. Um, pretty much every single player on their team is going to some like top division one college football program. Um, and most of them go end up going to the NFL. They're that good. So they were part of that Friday night high school showcase this past Friday. And they played uh, Bishop Sycamore High School, or high school, I guess. Um, and they crushed them. I think the final score was 58 to nothing. And basically about halfway through the ESPN telecast, um, the announcers realized that this is a fake high school. I mean, coming in, they, they claimed that they had all these like division one recruits. They had, um, you know, a bunch of players already accepted going to certain schools and ESPN supposedly has their own like database of like uh, high school players going to what schools and all that and recruiting databases. None of these players showed up on the database. Um, they, they couldn't find a roster online at all. Um, it came out afterwards that if you tried to look up the address of the school that was on the, the website that they had, uh, I think if you go on Google Maps, it just shows like some random house. I heard Clearly not a high box. school. What's up? I heard it was like their actual address that they have registered is like a P.O. box. Yeah. So it's like not an actual address. It's yeah. It's just like where you get mail. Yeah, pretty much. So Which Tyler, I look this I looked this up. Apparently there was another team back in like 2017, 18 called Christians of Faith Academy in Columbus. And back in 2019, in Bishop Sycamore's earlier days, the first season that they played, they wore those jerseys. So a lot of people are hypothesizing that COF or Christians of Faith Academy is the same thing as Bishop Sycamore, just rebranded. Wow, I never heard. I never heard about uh, Christians of Faith. It's like um, the same exact thing. Apparently. Yeah, it, it sounds like it. Um, oh my god! But I mean, the story the story is crazy because they get through this. They get through this game, and about halfway through the game, the announcers realized that a all these players are like. They're not real player profiles. None of them are actually going to Division One schools. Um, none of them are of high school age. I mean, a lot of these guys are like JUCO, like they're like our age. They're like 20, like JUCO 20 burnouts. Years. Yeah, they're in college. They're supposed to be in college or like dropouts. Yeah. Um, I think they had like two or three kids that were actually like eligible high school age, which is crazy. Um. And then it comes out like halfway through the game that, oh, they played a game like 24 hours, 36 hours before that, which for anybody that knows anything about football is you play a game once a week. Most. Football, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sport that takes a toll on your body where you can only play it once a week. Um, and they played a game on Wednesday night. And then had a game uh, on ESPN on Friday night, which is crazy. So the announcers were all like, oh, concerned for player safety and all that. I mean, it was just it was just terrible. And then after the game, 
uh, everybody realized that the head coach, I forget what his name was, uh, had a warrant out for his arrest. Uh, I believe it was like Joe something. Um, but he got fired, obviously, on Sunday. Uh, no surprise there. And then, I mean, it's Roy, just, Roy Johnson. Roy Johnson, that's what it was. Um, I got the J in there. Yeah. But it, it's, it's, it's crazy because... Uh, a fake high school was able to just show up on national television and play against the best high school in the country. Like of we'll all put the... some clips in here. We'll put like a clip or two in here so you guys can see how ridiculous this looked. Yeah, I mean, and the, there's a there was a video of the uh, of the pregame like hype from the coaches in the locker room. And it's just stupid. It's like, I mean, one of the coaches is like, don't step onto that football field if you're not ready to kill somebody. I mean, that's one way to hype up a high school football team. But I mean, I guess they're not even that. So, but it's, it's wild. Um, and apparently, apparently they're, they've been playing games this season against just some random high schools in Ohio. And if you look at the schedule of games that they had, it was like a game at 3 a.m., a game at 6 a.m. There was a game at like 1230 in the morning. I mean, they're, they're obviously – they're like playing these games at like times where they know no one's going to show up. It's crazy. But – yeah. <laughs> it's like almost unbelievable. And I'm seeing a video now. I can't really tell if it's clickbait. I'll have to check later. Probably um, not. I mean, this entire story seems like it should be clickbait. It's not. Yeah, I know. It says Bishop Sycamore scandal could result in jail time. Well, their like, head coach is in for jail. Who? Their I head got, coach. No, I get that. But like, could any of the kids? I don't think it, I don't think it would be the kids. I think it would be more the people that put it together. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Even possibly even people on the ESPN side of it. Who? Well, apparently ESPN doesn't even do their own bookings. It's like a third party. I read like this right, right, right. yesterday that yeah. like they relied the fault onto someone else and then they came out and apologized. Right. So the the booking company would be would be at fault liable Damn. because they that didn't do. Sense. Yeah, they didn't do their research and finding out that they played a game 36 hours prior, which is and bonkers. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that was our entertainment for the week. I mean, go read up on it. The story just get, it's get cra- it gets crazier and crazier and crazier every single time you just read more into it. Um, but anyway, on to a little bit more of a normal-ish a uh, story that came out yesterday. Well, not really a story, just something that I was browsing Twitter and just saw this and I just was very confused. Um, the, Rutgers, the Rutgers football Twitter uh, tweeted out a, a video of a bunch of um, alumni and New Jersey, New York uh, figures. Uh, I think the McCordys were in the video. Um, I think Aaron Boone, the manager of the New York Yankees, was in the video. Um, Basically be like, oh, welcome back, Coach Yano. Welcome back. Good to have you back. Go Knights, whatever. Um, And Ray Rice made an appearance in the video. Yeah. Why? Why would they ever do that? That's just stupid. (laughs) That That was my reaction. I was like. First off, fuck Ray Rice. I just want to get that. Fuck Ray Rice. Like, well, dude, yeah. Hell in hot water or whatever the saying is. But yeah. Oh, my God. But That's ridic- why would they ever do that? I'll let you do it. I mean, you've got all the you can, <laughs> no, I mean, it's, you've got all these players. You got them. You can just play the play the entire video with with Devin and Jason McCordy. That's all you had to do. You didn't have to involve anybody else. You went out of your way to include Ray Rice in the video. That's I can't even fathom that. Like, there's got to be someone in there who was like, "Yo, bad idea." I mean, bad idea. I, 
As of now, and I'll double check, as of now, it's still up on Twitter. I wouldn't be surprised if they just chopped that part out. Um, let me, let me, let me see real quick. Welcome back, Coach Chiano. Welcome back, Coach Chiano. Welcome back, Coach Chiano. Best of wishes to you as you come back to Rutgers, and I know do some more amazing things with that football program. Hey, what's up, Coach Chiano? Glad you're back this season and back for a long time. Best of luck this year. Go all you. Hey, Coach. Mike Burton here. I'm so excited to have you back at Rutgers. What's up, Coach Chiano? Sebastian Joseph Day here. So glad to have you back. Great things on the horizon at Rutgers. Welcome back, Coach. Teach the guys how to chop. You know, we're all happy to have you back on the banks, man. Bringing the chop back to Piscataway. I'm ready for Pandemonium and Piscataway Part 2. Let's go, man. Good luck this year, Coach. Good luck this season and keep chopping. Best of luck this season and keep chopping. Go are you. But it's, uh, I mean, it just got put out, I think, last night. I think it was like 7 o'clock last night they put the video out. Um, Jeez. Yeah, it's still up. Ruthless. Wow. Should probably oh, no, it's not. I think they deleted it. Oh, there you go. So maybe it'll come back up without any rare <laughs> Well, there you go. That's, we'll that's have to deleted. see. Oh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know why they would ever do that. Um, just, just weird. Um, all right, so let's get into college football. Uh, season starts – Season really starts today. I mean, there wasn't really no uh, eventful games on in week zero. Um, so season starts today on Thursday as we're recording this. Um, you'll see this on Friday. Um, even more games on Friday. And then obviously Saturday is going to be crazy. Um, but um, I put up a I put up a question thingy on uh, on the Instagram this week and just Felt uh, felt the need to field some questions from from the people of Instagram. So two big questions I got, and I talked to I talked to uh, you and Evan about this on your show. Go check that out. I'll link it up here. Yes. Um, the uh, well, I guess on the topic of Rutgers, um, I think Rutgers. One of the question I got was: Is Rutgers is Rutgers going to be back? Um, I absolutely think so. I mean, Greg Schiano is one of the best recruiters in the Big Ten. Um, obviously, something that Rutgers hasn't had in a couple of years. I mean, maybe not this year. I think they still have a really good team this year, but give it a few years and um, a few recruiting classes and a couple good bowl games, a good some good bowl wins. Um, build up that resume, and I think a few years, Rutgers could be contending for a Big Ten championship. Um, I don't think they're really ever going to get up to college football playoff level, but, I mean, you never know. Um, but I think Rutgers, Rutgers is going to be a team to, to watch this year. Um, I played Temple Temple today or yesterday as you're watching this. Um, I, I expect them to win that game, and I, I think they're going to be really good. I mean, not only this year, but in years to come. So New Jersey is looking good for uh, college football. That's for sure. Jersey on the map, baby. Yeah. I'd love to see it. Um, another question I got was, um, how has Alabama not been punished for their strength of schedule? Now, I can answer this in two ways. I can answer it in the past. It'd be like, well, you can't punish a team for going undefeated. If you run the table, you beat everybody. Um, then you have, you have no reason not to call yourselves national champions. You have no reason not to put yourself in the college football playoff. Um, now, for the future, Looking at this year, the the in the in conference schedule you can't really control because it's kind of on a cycle. Um, so whoever's in your cycle that year and is ranked, cool. If they're not, you can't really count that against the, the school for scheduling that because it's not scheduled. Um, 
But out of conference this year, you're still looking at Miami week one with Derek King, who's a Heisman hopeful. Um, I mean, he's up there in the Heisman odds before the season starts. So one of the best quarterbacks in college football week one. I mean, that's a pretty good test. I mean, I would say that the strength of schedule is there for week one, at least. Now, granted, they play Mercer week two, and then I think they have Southern Miss week four. But, you know, it's tough It's tough to, to schedule all these good games when, let's say, a team, a team like Iowa State, for example. Iowa State, if they run the table, they're in the college football playoff easily. Big 12 school. They run the table they're in. They're in that little uh, top 15, top 10 area where all I got to do is win, and they're good. Alabama can't schedule a school like that because they realize if they lose once, then their season's ruined. So why would you schedule a game against top-ranked Alabama and ruin your season if you lose, which is a very good chance you do, when you can schedule Bishop Sycamore. Exactly. <laughs> no, I mean, when you can schedule somebody in that five to 10 range where it's going to be a close and good game, and you can actually prove yourself and show, look, we can beat a top 10 school. It doesn't have to be number one Alabama, um, but we can go out there and perform and against top 10 school and we can prove that we should be in the top four come the selection Sunday. So that actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's the way I look at it. Now, Alabama can schedule whoever the hell they want. The other school still has to approve and accept it. So it's tough. I mean, I'm glad that Miami is on the schedule. They schedule home and home. Um, I think in the in, our, in the coming years, I think I think Texas is on the on the schedule. Uh, Notre Dame. Oklahoma. I mean, there's some in the coming years, Alabama is definitely putting together that out of conference schedule. So uh, there's no reason why anybody should really be complaining about their strength of schedule anymore. Um, Cause Saban's doing his best. I mean, still got to rely on other schools, but moving on um, this week, hurricane Ida, uh, T's and P's, thoughts and prayers go out to the city of New Orleans. Um, absolutely devastated for uh, what happened down there. But uh, Tulane University obviously had to evacuate their entire student body. Uh, I think all the students had to evacuate to Houston. <clears throat> to get out of state. I don't know where they went, but yeah, I think I'm a town who was there who had to evacuate. Yeah. I believe they went up to Houston. Their football team uh, decided to come out to uh, to Birmingham and Tuscaloosa to practice. <laughs> I walked out. So I was walking to class the other day, and I just see this giant bus with two lane on it. I'm like, we're not playing two lane week. <laughs> yeah, you were like, wait, I thought it's Miami. <laughs> like, wait, what? what's going on here? <laughs> no, that's wild. And then at first I thought it was like, at first I thought it was like the women's soccer team or something because I know their season's underway. That's it. That's literally it for sports down here right now. So I was like, what the hell is going on? And then I see later that uh, the football team had to practice. I was like, that makes a lot more sense. Um, but yeah, crazy, crazy to be Tulane right now. I mean, you got, uh, you're supposed to have a week one game against Oklahoma, huge week one game. Um, in Tulane, that would have been crazy if, if the uh, if the student body was, was going to be there uh, in New Orleans, but uh, the game had to be moved to Oklahoma because of the hurricane. So just makes the game a little bit easier for Oklahoma to win. Um, not that it was going to be a close game anyway, but unfortunate times, obviously, for Tulane. Um, on a more lighter note, Last night or Wednesday night, uh, we had our first uh, first game of week one. Uh, UAB, Alabama, Birmingham played Jacksonville State. And it was not close. Great game 
for UAB, but it was not close. I think uh, they won 31 to nothing over Jacksonville State. Now, cool story for UAB. They, uh, their football team, their football program got cut from uh, school funding in 2014. And uh, I, was on, I was on YouTube a couple months ago and I saw the video. It was like this whole, um, they brought like the, the dean in or the president or the athletic director, whoever the hell he was. Um, they brought him into like after a practice or something and basically told like the players like like look you're uh we're gonna have to cut like cut the football program and it was wild I mean the players were like screaming yelling like cussing at them um I mean guys were crying it was it was just terrible and it came out of nowhere um but eventually they got the football program back in 2017. Um, and yeah, they've, they've just escalated that program so quickly since then. I mean, going out week one against Jacksonville State and killing them 31 nothing. That's how you rebound. Um, so great game. Tyler Johnson, uh, the quarterback for UAB, 300 yards, four touchdowns. Not much more you can ask out of him. Um, and then there's Nebraska in the week zero game against Illinois, uh, who could not have had a worse week one, their first game. Uh, Nebraska, probably the sloppiest game I've ever seen. Uh, game started with a safety, <laughs> like first or second play of the game, safety. Um, I believe there were six fumbles in the entire game. It's like four interceptions. Crazy. There was, a, there was a point where the guy ran like 80 yards, had a wide open touchdown. The ball just fell out of his hands like the five-yard line. I mean, Nebraska is just ridiculous. Um, but, I mean, we'll get to Nebraska later because I've got a few upsets for week, for week one. That I think are going to be pretty intriguing. Nebraska might be one of them. Um, another big storyline would be uh, San Jose State, a team that I believe should be ranked personally. I believe they're ridiculously good. Um, but I guess the, the AP ranking people uh, disagree with me. But they went out, supported my claim and just absolutely obliterated Southern Utah 45 to 14. Uh, Nick Starkle, their quarterback, 450 passing yards, four touchdowns. If they're not ranked going into week two, then something's wrong and something, something's up because this team is ridiculous. Uh, San Jose State needs to be a team to watch this year. Um, they're, they're gonna, they might sneak their way into a New Year's Six Bowl very, very good possibility. I mean, they they could just, they could run the table. Who knows? They could be the Coastal Carolina. Now, UConn decided not to play last year because of COVID. Um, the school decided to ban all athletics for uh, 2020. So because of that, it has been going into, uh, going into Saturday, it was 630. 34 days, I believe, since UConn had last scored a point in college football. So they play Fresno State on Saturday, and they continue the streak. They lost 45 to nothing and continue the, uh, the pointless streak. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's uh, ugly times for UConn football. Um, Huskies ain't barking. Was well, yeah, the Husky. No, Huskies not at barking. all. No, not at all. Um, but there is hope because next next week they play. Uh, or this week they play Holy Cross. So either uh, Holy Cross is in for a game of their life, or uh, UConn might sneak one out, like That's three nothing, three nothing, probably final score. It's a kicker's <laughs> day, Tyler. Yeah. 
for sure. Um, and last big headline I wanted to talk about, um, cause I, I mentioned it on last week's episode. Uh, we could really talk about this game for days if we wanted to, um, Georgia and Clemson, uh, college game day game of the week, number five versus number three. Um, so some hypotheticals here, because a lot of people don't realize that this game could it not could it will change the face of college football this year i mean whatever happens in this game affects every single game following it now let's take the hypothetical that georgia goes out there as a number five and beats clemson okay so that means clemson's 0 one now in order for them to make the playoff clemson would then probably have to uh win out, win the ACC, and just hope they get in with one loss, which I think they would. Um, but if I'm Clemson, that's a game you cannot lose because that gives you no wiggle room after that. I mean, if you lose a game in the ACC, the ACC is not that good. Um, and the playoff committee has shown that they don't really respect the ACC as much as they do with the SEC or the Big Ten. They're done with two losses. They're not getting in. Now, Georgia, on the other hand, if they, let's say they win, that might be enough to put them into the playoff. Obviously, if they win out, but giving them a loss, giving them a loss against uh, Alabama in the regular season. I think if they, if they win this game and then uh, lose to Alabama, I think they still get in. I'm sorry. Uh, I think they still get in with one loss. Um, Now, on the flip side, if Georgia loses this game and then loses to Alabama, they're done. They're not getting in because I don't think there's ever been a team in the playoff with two losses. Um, Was Clemson if they year with one? What's up? Was there was there a team in last year with one? Was it did Notre Dame have a loss? Um. Notre Dame beat Notre Dame beat Clemson, so I think they both had one loss. I could be wrong. No, no, it did. I, I was just curious more. I don't think there's ever been a two-loss team. Yeah, that's what I was saying, but more like one loss. Like, there's hardly ever one-loss teams. And if they are, they have to be, like, the best of the best, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, I, don't know. I feel like I, the only way I, w- I could ever see a two-loss team – getting into the playoff is if they like barely lost to the same team in like two games. Like let's say Georgia uh, beats Clemson and then plays Alabama in the regular season, barely loses and then plays Alabama in the SEC championship and barely loses. loses. I think they get in if they crush everybody else. That's the only way though. I get that. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you lose to two different teams, I don't think you can get in it that, that way. Um, but, yeah, a lot up in the air for that game. It's going to be a crazy one. Um, definitely going to be uh, the game to watch this week. Um, but uh, I told you I was going to get to it. Some upsets. Let's go to upset watch. Upsets for this week. Um, I talked about it on your show, Max. I mentioned it last week. Virginia Tech and North Carolina is just too intriguing of a game. I looked at the odds this morning, and North Carolina is only favored by five and a half points. As a number 10 overall school, Virginia Tech, Virginia, Virginia Tech is unranked. I think Virginia Tech – very good possibility they could just go and in, go into their home stadium. That place is crazy, um, especially during a night game. Um, UNC really needs to show that they could be a school that can go into that kind of environment and just blow a team out if they really want to show that they're a top-notch school. Um, I think this is going to be a good test to see what we're going to get out of North Carolina this year. Um, Virginia Tech. If they win or lose this game, I think they're still going to be a 500 school. 
if at best. Um, but I, I still think that Virginia Tech has a very good chance of winning this game just because of that atmosphere um, in their home stadium is just absolutely crazy. Um, but uh, another upset watch that I have, San Jose State, again, love my Trojans. Um, they're, they're going up against number 15, USC. Uh, USC is favored by uh, 14 points. I would definitely take San Jose State in that bet, yeah, especially getting 14 points. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. San Jose State's offense is so good, so good. Um, I think they're. I think if if they're going to lose, they're definitely going to lose by less than 14. That's for sure. Um, it'll it'll be a good one. I wouldn't be. I would not be surprised if San Jose State pull off the upset. Um, and the last one. I had to mention it uh, just for the memes. Because if I call this game and it actually happens, uh, it's going to be crazy. But uh, Fordham. Fordham College. It's playing you, Nebraska. You think this Fordham's going to win? I'm just saying Nebraska sucks. Like, if you watch that game against Illinois – like Bishop Sycamore can beat Nebraska right now. I mean, I don't know shit, so I'm not going to try to argue on. Argue I know, I know, this, I know. But like Fordham, does Fordham produce good football players? No, no. Oh, okay. No, they produce good, uh, uh, good announcers and uh, TV personalities, but that's about it. I thought they had some good wrestling there too. They know. might. They might. I would. Uh, I would not be the person to go to when it comes to uh, college <laughs> wrestling. Same. Um. I know Penn State's probably pretty good. That's about it, though. Yeah. Um. But. Just, just for the memes, because if I if if Fordham does somehow, like the one in a million chance that they do win this game. Right here, I'm the person that called it, and we'll give you full credit. I'll post it yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Um. But yeah, those are the upsets I have. Um. Obviously, I'm not saying they're gonna happen, but would not be surprised at all if they did. Um. But yeah, big weekend this weekend. Um, Alabama, Miami, Georgia, Clemson, Penn State, and Wisconsin. It's going to be a tough Saturday to do anything but watch college but watch college football. Um, on uh, this afternoon, um, obviously yesterday when this comes out, you're watching this. It's very confusing to me. Um, it's just, I hate it. Yeah, it's it's bad. Um, yesterday, which is Thursday, when you're watching this today, when when I'm when we're recording this, um, uh, Coastal Carolina and the Citadel are playing. Best of luck to Isaiah Likely, a uh, friend of the old show. Um, I actually texted him this morning. He actually responded, which is cool. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, best of luck to the shots. Uh, go mullets. Um, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, tune in to uh, Max and Evan's show. Uh, just came out yesterday. Definitely a must watch. I'll be on there talking everything I just talked about. Um, follow the Instagram, follow Washed Up Sports Podcast on Instagram too. Um, I think you guys have a Twitter and TikTok you can follow too. Um, go with them up cool. there. Yeah, exactly. Um, go follow everything. Um, but yeah, that'll do it for us. Signing off. Adios. Peace, Ty. Good shit, bro. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the rest of our channel and subscribe. Make sure to follow our Instagram and maybe consider subscribing on Patreon for our bonus content. You can only find it there. I promise it will be well worth it. Thanks.